Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on my channel. Today I'm going to be going over how to make a nice chill piano beat in FL Studio. This isn't just limited to FL by the way, this should work in any DAW, it's just going to be some production tips that I've found for this type of music. And I'm going to start us off by playing a little demo of what you could hope to kind of capture a similar vibe to by the end of this. I'll start from about here so that way you could just hear a little bit of that build up and the drop. And then I'm going to break this down and hopefully explain it in a way that's really easily digestible. So with that being said, let's go ahead and play what we've got so far. So that's what I did make for this video, and we're going to start with obviously the most important part, this being a piano. Now I'm going to show you how to go about making a nice tone for yourself, but this loop specifically I actually pulled off of Looperman, which is something similar to Splice. So you can of course do it either way, you can make a nice little piano loop yourself, or go ahead and grab one from the internet. Massive shouts to the user Slow Keith for this one, I heard it and honestly loved it right away and knew I had to make something out of it. But you could hear on its own, this piano sounds like this. It was just a really nice chord progression. I did a bit of processing on this though. Mainly the original loop I thought was too dynamic for what I wanted to make. So I'm just kind of compressing it a little bit here. Just enough to bring up those low points a little bit. But say for example, you don't want to use a loop and you want some tips on how to get something similar to this. I am going to be able to show you how to do something a bit similar. So I have a very nice piano that I would use for something with that kind of tone. And this is actually one of my contact libraries. If you don't have that, you can of course just use the default FL Studio piano. I've talked about this numerous times, how it's honestly really capable. I'm going to show you how to access that just in case you don't know. You go to this screen over here, packs, instruments, keyboard, and then just go ahead and drag this close grand one onto your patterns and you could use it. I'm not going to use that in this video, but it is a really nice one and I would recommend you do that. Now I've got my MIDI keyboard plugged in and by default this piano is going to sound like this. I'm actually going to go ahead and throw it on the same mixer as my other one so it has that compressor. Now a couple things I like to do to get this to sound a bit better for this type of song and hopefully match that loop a bit. I like to make it very soft with the tone and you could change the lid position. So like close it, have it sound like that, which is really nice. My playing isn't going to be great because I am getting a lot of latency, unfortunately, so I can't really play anything too nice. The second thing I like to do, I've mentioned this in another video as well, is adjust the tuning. This is because you're actually going to change how the notes sound if you play them, you know, transpose back up to what the actual note should be. So like right here, I've turned this down minus five and on my MIDI keyboard, I'm actually going to transpose it up five at the same time. So you're gonna think like, what's the point of that? But it actually changes how things sound. You're gonna get a softer tone if you pitch it down a bit. You see that? So from this point, it's doing some things for space, like adding some reverb, might just crank these a bit because this one actually sounds quite nice. And then from here, it's literally just as simple as coming up with a progression. Obviously, that might be a bit difficult depending on where you are in making music. Like if you're not too good at chords yet, you might struggle a bit. But honestly, my number one tip is just get a MIDI keyboard if you have one and just try to vibe out on it for a bit. You'll probably come up with something nice. Like, for example, I'm just sitting here now, I might come up with... I don't know, just something. You want to make a nice piano loop or like I said, download one. And from here, that's the piano aspect done. But you'll notice a lot of this drop is me fleshing that out a bit with backing elements. The first thing, and I think this is arguably one of the most important, are the drums in this track. I'm actually doing some really cool off the grid stuff, which I think worked out really nicely. And that bumps this track to the next level. Let me go ahead and demonstrate that now by just soloing every instance of our drums here. So my drums in this track sound like this. 
So if we zoom in really far, notice how these hats are actually a couple of ticks off the grid. If I didn't do that, it's just very static and I thought it was boring. But I made sure to align these, like here I have this top loop that I've chopped up. I made sure the hats were also delayed the same amount, otherwise you get this like weird unintentional phlegm that you kind of don't want. And then apart from that I just went for like a lo-fi kind of sample selection. We got this super dark kick and that oppressively dry snare. And this is playing very nicely with our bass line that also goes with our chords. So if we listen to this, this is actually an 808, but before I hit play on it, I want to show you what I did. Underneath this section here, you have sample start. This controls like where, like on the sampler it's using. If I had it all the way out here, this 808 has like this very intense transient. Sounds like that. That was actually conflicting with my kick quite a bit. It was like taking up the same space in the mix, and even though I was side chaining, it just became distracting to listen to. Not necessarily bad, but this was an intentional choice I made to kind of get a smooth low end instead, and then let the kick be that transient. So from there I went and just wrote a nice little slidey bass line. And to do that I just wrote it while listening to the piano, and tried to come up with something that played nice with it, which sounds like this. It just fits and it sounded really nice. So those elements now, you see we have our drums, we talked about the bass playing with the piano. I also added this very heavily reverbed lead sound, which sounds like this. That was the same kind of premise as the bass as well, I just listened to the piano and kind of heard a top line in my head and then tried to basically write it down. So without my effects, sounds like this. Pretty similar, I just compressed it and added a lot more reverb, but this was just a sound in a plugin known as Analog Lab. This was just me cycling presets and I found a nice free one. I kind of wanted to go for sort of a flute type sound, but very far in the background, and I think this achieved it very nicely. So that is a breakdown of the elements in this first section of the drop. So this plays for that loop here that I have selected, and then when we get into the next repetition, we've added some ear candy to make it more interesting. This is something I definitely want to talk about because it's super cool. Uh, first off, I just did some weird little sine wave sound design with air can noise on Serum. So if I open up this patch, you can see that. It's just some sine waves, and I'm doing some like weird filter shapes with air can to like shape that resonance, make it very intense. And this is just some like slidey notes that go in the background. Sounds like this. Very weird sound, but it definitely does what it needs to in the mix. If I play that with the piano, you hear it. So I have it like following that same note up top the first time, but then over here it actually goes down, and I thought that was a cool variation. That's not the only ear candy though, we also have this really cool glidey synth that goes in the background, sounds like this. Very far in the back. But, it sounds really nice if we layer that with everything, so that with the sine waves. Put in this too. Suddenly there's like a lot of stereo information that's very important to it. Then we get into this weird like after drop section that's just like bass. It's very dry so I threw that wet sign thing in the back again. I also did something really cool that's very like not noticeable in the mix and eh, maybe a little bit but I took this weird like laser sound and moved it off the grid to follow that hat pattern a bit. So it sounds like this. Sounds horrible on its own, but in the mix, I think this is one of the coolest things of the track because it's just so subtle. Also changed the bass here to be something a little longer instead of that 808. And then when we get into our drop two, it's mainly the same thing. I cut the piano and I added a second lead that layers with it. It's this cool like vocally lead. It sounds like this. Very weird sound. Also added this hyper-compressed electric piano that's just playing some root notes. And then a hat layer, just to make the drums a bit bigger. This is mainly just me doing some layering to make this second section more interesting, but I think it gives it a lot of punch and it sounds nice. 
Almost forgot to mention, you notice the hats got a little more cluttery. That was intentional. I added this layer actually in MIDI, which is something I don't do often. Could probably be fixed up a little bit. It's maybe a little too clashy for my tastes, but I thought this was a really nice addition. So that is how I made this track. I will go ahead and play it out again in case you liked it and want to hear some more. But I hope this breaks it down a bit and hopefully you understand how to make something similar to this now. Let me know in the comments if there's any additional tips you need or if you have any to provide. And drop a like and subscribe for more content like this in the future. But I will catch you guys in the next one.